Hello YouTube, welcome back to my Eldar Tactica series. Today we're looking at Dire Avengers. I'm going to give you an overview on their history, their stat lines, war gear, exarch abilities, traits, HQ auras, stratagems, psychic powers you can use, overall strats at the end of the video. And without further ado, let's jump right in. jump into the tactics I want to remind you all that I did a previous video on striking scorpions if you haven't seen that go check up there in the top right first we're gonna look at their history now to give a history on the Dire Avengers would be to give a history on their Phoenix Lord Azurman as Azurman is not only the original founder of the Dire Avenger aspect but all aspects and Phoenix Lords alike Azurman's story begins just before the fall of the Eldar where Slaanesh was born and trillions and trillions of souls died across the entire universe at the time Azurman who had a different name at this point, was living alone by himself and was basically a bum. Yep, a drug addict. His only family was his one brother who was enrolled in the military and he was some kind of general. Also at the time, there were many naysayers. There was two different sides. One side of people with like warlocks and farseers who were predicting the end of times, also known as the Rana Dandra. And on the other side, we had people that were saying it definitely can't be true and that they were all crazy and they went about their lives as normal. As I'm sure you can guess, Azurman's brother took this very seriously and wanted to fly with other Eldar across the entire universe to get away from the center of the universe or where the Rana Dandra was going to happen and Azurman just wanted to do his thing and sit at home and do his usual business. Next minute the Rana Dandra hits, people are dying, there's trillions of souls ripping their flesh apart in the streets and their eyes are popping out of their head, it's gruesome. But Azurman manages to live through all of that. Probably the worst experience he's ever had, but still, he lived. Later on, in this post-apocalyptic world that he's now stranded upon, he meets up with his brother and some other people. Eventually, those people, including his brother, are succumbed to Slanesh demons and become almost like zombies, in which Azurman then has to murder his own brother to stop him from killing him. He then begins to live on his own for a little while, creating gardens and a shrine type of thing to kind of recreate his life and get his life back on track. He randomly one day meets a little girl who he doesn't know how to interact with and ends up shunning away. Then upon finding solace on his own, he's approached by a literal god, Azurian. Azurian imbues him with many different powers and says to him that he is going to become the first of many phoenix lords and he is one of the Eldar legends and the strongest Eldar to ever live. He then goes to find the girl, apologizes to her, and begins to train her as his first pupil, also known as Jane Zar. And the rest is pretty much history. A couple 10,000 years later, and he's known as an Eldar legend, has founded all of the different Exarch temples, and is now the oldest living Phoenix Lord. And that is how I met your mother. Let's move on to their stat line and their war gear. Just like in the last video about striking scorpions, the Dire Avengers are essentially equipped exactly the same as pretty much all the other aspects. The one difference is that they only have normal aspect armor like hawks and banshees and not heavy aspect armor like scorpions and reapers. They come equipped with their basic Avenger catapults which is essentially a normal guardian catapult with an extra 6 inches of range. And as usual the only war gear upgrades that you can take are to the Exarch that comes along with them for free. Now this Exarch is quite lucky as he has many different options including one Avenger Catapult or two Avenger Catapults or a Shuriken Pistol and Dire Sword or a Shuriken Pistol and Power Glaive or even a Shimmer Shield and Power Glaive. Speaking of Exarchs, let's move quickly on to his abilities from the Psychic Awakening book. If you did not already know, the Psychic Awakening book Phoenix Rising released a huge set of rules that detail Exarch abilities for every aspect squad, giving them six new abilities, meaning that they now have seven different abilities to choose from and a stratagem that allows them to take a new ability and their original ability for one command point. Looking at the Dire Avenger abilities, at first glance, Blade Storm is perhaps the best choice, which gives you an additional hit for every single shuriken hit roll of a 6+, plus on the entire unit and not just the leader himself. And although I could see Defend being used against Horde armies such as Orcs, I do think that Avenging Strikes is the most interesting and is probably the most 
most useful. Avenging Strikes gives you plus one to hit and plus one to wound in both the shooting and the fight phase as long as you've taken one model away from the unit. And of course the Exarch is still alive. I did of course question whether that this would apply to the shooting phase upon first reading it, but upon doing some research it does say that every single attack made in the shooting phase is a shooting attack and therefore I would deem that this does apply to the shooting phase as well. Which makes this ability a lot stronger than you first realize because shuriken weaponry when wounding a target on a 6 plus means that the AP changes from 0 to minus 3 which means that this now triggers on 5 pluses. Let's move quickly on to traits. Now straight out the gate a layer talk is probably your best bet because a dire avenger has a range of 18 can advance and shoot perfectly normally and they move 7. So with their 7 plus a d6 plus an 18 inch range that means that you can essentially stay away from the enemy as much as possible to get that minus one hit modifier and it is really good. But nevertheless I'm going to take you through a few abilities from the Psychic Awakening book as well that I could see being used for a large detachment of Dire Avengers. I only have three and they are Masterful Shots, Superior Shurikens and Warding Runes which are ignore cover, get an extra four inches of range to your shuriken weapons or a five plus feel no pain against mortal wounds as your Dire Avengers are generally going to be the closest target in a lot of situations so they're great for deflecting smite. Hey let's talk about HQs and you know Azuman's gonna be in there. Now again if you haven't seen the last video I did talk in length about Autarchs and how they're fantastic for denying overwatch and giving you that reroll hit roll of one bubble. But aside from that, today we're going to talk about Azuaman. Now I don't want to talk too much about him because I'd like to do a video on him in the future, but he did drop from 180 points down to 150 points in the last chapter approved and has become good enough, let's say, to be noticed by some professional players, such as Nick Nanavati recently. I had actually made a list recently with him in it and 30 Dire Avengers with Avenging Strikes, as not only does he give all aspect units a 5 plus invulnerable save, but he also gives Dire Avengers a 4 plus invulnerable save, and on top of that is quite good in combat. He has an extra attack above all the other Phoenix Lords, and if you're lucky enough to roll 6s to wound, he he does D3 mortal wounds in addition. Unfortunately, he is only strength 5. But at 150 points and sporting a 2 plus invulnerable save in combat whilst he has the protect buff on him, he is quite a legend. Moving swiftly on to some stratagems. Now of course, Dire Avengers are quite a basic unit. They are your basic troops and they are the only aspect unit that are troop choices. So of course, all of these standard stratagems like lightning fast reactions and fire and fade are quite useful, but there is one that isn't used as much, which I think could be quite good, which is Runes of Witnessing. Now of course every single Eldar player runs a Farseer in the list, and it's pretty much heresy to not do so. So when you have your Farseer in the middle of your army, let's say that you spread your Dire Avengers quite thin across the entire board to take objectives, and you don't want to just doom one target to death. This could be a quite useful stratagem, so that all of your Dire Avenger units are within six of your Farseer and you can reroll wound rolls of one, especially while you're getting that plus one to wound from Avenging Strikes. Let's say you're facing a horde of things that are toughness three, such as Termagants or perhaps Demonettes, then you will be wounding them now on twos and rerolling all of your ones. Speaking of psychic powers, here we are. Now there isn't really much to say in terms of psychic powers, obviously all the good ones are going to be used, such as Doom, Jinx, Guide, Protect, especially Protect when you have a Zoomman next to you for a three plus invulnerable save, but there is one that I would like to talk about a bit more, which is one from the Psychic Awakening book known as Impair Senses. Now Impair Senses basically picks an enemy model to only fire at the closest visible target unless another target is within 18 inches. This could be extremely useful when running Dire Avengers as you can buff the crap out of them so that they have a 3 plus a model, minus 1 to hit, whatever you'd like to do, and then they can shield a Warlock within their ranks and you can pick a unit such as a Knight or a big Lord of War and that one model 
Hulk can only then fire at your Dire Avengers until they are all gone. And of course I know you could do the exact same thing with Guardians and they're much cheaper, but I'm just saying that if you'd like the extra firepower from Dire Avengers, then you could use the Dire Avengers and still get your 3 plus invulnerable save, or even better, a 2 plus armor save with protect and being in cover. Now let's look at some overall strats. As usual, I'm going to provide you with three strats. Two will be a bit fun, and one will be a bit more competitive. Let's look at the fun one. I call this first one, the pop and drop. Now the one downside to the avenging strikes trait is that you actually have to lose a model first before you actually get all of the bonuses. So a nice little way to do that is by putting your Dire Avengers inside a tank. In fact, the probability of losing the exact amount of Dire Avengers you want is perfect because a wave weapon can hold 12 troops. So if you put two units of five in there, or two units of six, it doesn't really matter, with two characters, for example, and you let the enemy shoot your wave serpent, it dies, and then they blow up and they have to get out, you have to roll a dice for each model in the unit. On 12 dice, you're likely to roll two ones, which means you lose one Dire Avenger from each unit. You can then pop out, drop, and blast some people with your Avenging Strikes ability. And usually with this strat, most people like to run two Avenger Catapults on their Exarch, which means essentially you basically didn't even lose a model because you still have five wounds in, because the Exarch has two and you still have five guns because the Exarch has two. So you're giving up a wound and yes, two shots, but you're still getting your Avenging Strikes ability. And the only thing that you needed to do to do that is literally have your guys inside of a tank and potentially go second versing either a marine player or someone dumb enough to shoot your tanks. Strat number two, Double Dire. This strat makes use of the Dire Avenger Exarch weaponry, the Dire Sword. If you didn't know, the Dire Sword gives you user strength, minus two AP, one damage, but sixes to wound are a mortal wound in addition. And as this is an old codex, and just like the shuriken weapons themselves, this is just a six plus. It is not unmodified, which means that if you get plus one to wound from your Avenging Strikes ability, you can then do mortal wound output on fives. So not that it would be the greatest strat in the world, but let's say that you give your Dire Avengers Hunters of Ancient Relics for an extra attack, and then potentially something like rear or hit rolls of one in the first round of combat with Savage Blades. Your Exarch will get three attacks, uh, hitting on twos and wounding on plus one strength, even though they're strength three, but fives to wound will do a mortal wound in addition. This can be quite handy against things like invulnerable saves or really high armor saves. Just quite a good little ability. And lastly, we have Pablo Escobar and his 30 Amigos. That was a drug reference if you didn't get it. This strat makes use of 30 Dire Avengers with their Avenging Strikes ability yet again with a Zorman in the middle. I would also include something like a Farseer to use Runes of Witnessing, an Ortark to give Rero Heralds of One, or potentially even an Avatar of Cain just to give them all Fearless. Assuming that you have this as a battalion, you could make use of some of some traits like giving them an extra four inches of range with superior shurikens and ignoring cover saves just to give that competitive edge on people who like to sit in buildings all game. However, when I made this choice and decided to run this list, I used a layer talk instead because I had other models in my detachment that benefit from a layer talk a bit more as they don't have shuriken weapons. This strat is a really solid firebase of 30 models which have objective secured, can overwatch people on fives using defense tactics and are extremely resilient thanks to their four up invulnerable from Azurman himself allowing you to spread wide and thin and still have that safety net of being able to tank a lot of damage. Especially now in a marine meta where a lot of weapons are AP-1, the 4-up invulnerable save really does work. If you don't believe me, then you can check out Nick Nanavati who ran this strat the other day, making uses of smaller Diamond squads, I think around 7 or 8 man strong, but still using this strat nonetheless. And that is it for our strats, but again, at the end of the video, I would like to plug my little Corsair Codex that I made. If you are unaware, as you did not watch the last video, I have created a Corsair's Codex. This is a full codex filled with lore and every single thing that comes along with a codex. It is in the links below, you can use it for free, and all I ask is for some feedback. Whether you provide that through Twitter or Instagram or Facebook, whatever you'd like to do, even in the YouTube comments, it is down below. Cheers. And of course, subscribe down below, give this video a like if you liked it, um, and let me know what unit you'd like to see me do next. 
Otherwise, I hope you found this video useful. My name is Ben Jack, this is Barnyard Wargaming, and I'll see you in the next one. Peace.